Now, normally, we don't want to be touching caterpillars from moths and butterflies, especially if you don't know what kind they are, because they might have hairs that can sting you. But we've been gifted this special little visit from this special little guy. Do you know what he is yet? Let's see what we got. That beautiful coloration on the back is what's going to clue us in on what it is. Its coloration behind the head and on the upper back well, have it remind you of a saddle because we're looking at the saddled prominent moth still in the larval caterpillar stage. The markings on their backs can get quite detailed. Here's what they look like as moths. They can vary from greenish gray or brownish gray and can have either creamy white or little black splotches on them in their wings. But generally, it's the male moths that are darker and have less markings on them. They are inconspicuous little creatures blending into their environment very well. They have four life stages, egg, larva, pupa, and then as an adult moth. They feed on a variety of broadleafed trees and shrubs, but most favor sugar maples, American beech, yellow birch, and paper birch. They overwinter as pupa, buried one to three inches down in the leaf litter, in an enclosed, thin, loosely constructed cocoon of silken threads and leaf fragments. They'll emerge in late May through the first week of July. They normally emerge during daylight hours and will crawl to a nearby tree or a vertical surface to inflate out their wings and dry them, and they'll rest the remainder of the day. Well, these caterpillars have been blamed for widespread defoliation in the past, but it also occurred concurrently with other hardwood defoliators like the maple worm and green striped maple worms and oak leaf caterpillars. They can all feed together in late summer and cause damage as a group. But all their great numbers are usually followed by a sudden collapse after a few years and they are no longer an issue. And they have many predators of their own, of birds, mammals, and insects. The bronze grackle, for instance, loves them. And shrews will find and eat their little pupas in the leaf litter. Their main insect predators are stink bugs and ground beetles. Speaking of which, we just did a video about predatory stink bugs. It was fascinating how they use their little tongue to inject toxins into their prey. Wasps, and small wasps even, will eat their eggs and can even be accounted for 40 to 80% of their egg mortality. And furthermore, other wasps will engage in pupal parasitism. That's when they'll lay their wasp egg in the pupa, and then when their wasp hatches, they'll already have something to feed on. And another thing that you probably didn't see coming that will also keep their populations at bay is fungal diseases, like cordyceps species and entomophthora species. As we've witnessed cordyceps species in the past with insects, the fungus takes over their body and then grows from it. It's just super fascinating. Well, in conclusion, I guess unless you're a tapper for maple syrup production, or unless you see a full tree of these guys, there isn't much to worry about. A lot of animals would love to eat them. But for us, what a wonderful little visit and an opportunity to explore yet another one of God's beautiful creatures. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.